Right then folks, bit of a round up, not much going on now, wind's getting up a bit as well and sun's setting so I'll just show you what's going on, what little there is. Got a few turnips in now, they're a lot smaller than the ones I'll show you in a bit, but they'll be good all winter hopefully. Final lot of lettuce now, they're looking a bit rough but you can still eat the middle of these little gems. And I've still got some of those multigrain, my, my new favourite lettuce of all time. I'm trying to get out of the sun aren't I? I'll try and get this way, right, Savoys, come good now, some nice heads on them, I'm going to grow a lot more of those next year, because I do love a Savoy cabbage, and they, like I say, when they get to this time of year, when it starts cooling down a bit, they do stand well, so basically all I've got now in this part is, I've weeded it, hoed all the weeds off and chucked loads of uh, spent potato compost in, try and get hold of some horse muck and I'll dig that in a bit later, Sarpo Mira's still growing, weeks and weeks after the, the others were hit by blight, so I haven't watered them actually for about three weeks, so they're probably not as big as they should be. So I'll do a bit of a potato reveal in a while in one of my next videos and we'll see what sort of crop we get. Right, that's about it for this bit, I'll just nip over into the next bit and have a look and see what's going on over there. I'll just show you my sweet peas folks, they've been flowering for absolutely weeks and weeks. And they're still coming, they're just getting taller, they're about 8 foot tall now, so they're loving this Indian summer we're having, so I could do with picking a few of those. But no, it's been a really belting season for flowers, well, what flowers are grow, these sweet peas, and look at that, hey up, try and get bee in. Bumblebee at this time of year, right. Right, I'll go into the next bit and have a look. Well, over into the, uh, the other bit where the maras were growing and stuff. Been doing a good lot of weeding now, I've weeded everything out weeded all the weeds out and the, the leeks are ready to harvest now I mean they're not massive but they'll do for me you know they're thick enough for me because I plant them quite closer together but they're a decent enough size now the sun I can't get into the sun this is next year's purple sprouting broccoli which is growing growing really well now I'll take all the netting off in about two or three weeks when all the risk of the cabbage white butterflies has gone and let it grow properly and stake it uh, this is what I'm gonna. This is what I've been sort of digging over and preparing for for the overwintering onions, the Japanese onions. I'll be growing those. I think they're called Shensu Yellow or something, and probably Electric or Radar, the purple ones. Turnips have been really good this year. I haven't grown them for a few years. This sort. Some are getting a little bit too big. Look, they're cracking. Uh, they're cracking uh, veg, you like, you know. So these are all right now, these are ready to take now, and the ones that I've got over in the other bit, they should see us through till Christmas. Parsnips look absolutely massive on top, I did pull one and it was huge. These are just the eating ones, so they'll be great till Christmas as well. Kale, everything's just still flying because it's like an Indian summer, isn't it? This hot weather we're having now, it's 24 degrees today. Plenty of kale, absolutely tons, way more than I'm going to need. But that, like I said, that stays stays sound all winter as well so it's something you can just come up and pick in the dark depths of winter anyway this is where my maras were so I've chopped them off now and I'm preparing the soil for next year I've hoed all the weeds off I'm adding as much compost and spent manure and everything as I can as I can find I need to get some horse muck so that's it it's all done that's where they were growing in the sand like I say I've just tidied it all up hoed all the weeds and I just need to add as much organic matter because if you can see the size of the sort of plant and the marrow as well, it doesn't. Uh, they don't have to take some nutrients out of the soil. So that's this bit. I'll just give you a quick look at me uh, feeble pumpkins now. Well, hi folks. This year has definitely convinced me that I cannot grow a pumpkin outside up here because we've had the best summer on record for years, and that's it. Well, I've got another one. I'll show you that, but it's nothing special at all. Probably about 30 or 40 pounds. It might get to 50 or 60, who knows, it might even get to 100 if we get any decent weather continuing, but uh, nothing to write home about whatsoever. I'll just show you my other one, that's quite a nice shape, the next one. So this is the other one on the other plant. It's a nicer shape, a rounder shape. I'll just put my foot there, if you can see. As you can see, it's not very big. It's obviously got the sort of strain, the genetics in it to be big because the stalks are as thick as my wrist, well thicker than my wrist. 
but the fruit's quite small so like I said I'm not going to try these again because just, I'm just flogging a dead horse really up here outside it's too cold even in the hottest of summers right let's have a nip into the poly till now for the last bit and I'll show you what's going on in there right then folks have a look at poly till now so all the shows are over now all the onions have been harvested so I've filled this onion bed now with lettuces, cabbage and a few spring onions so that should uh, produce a few bits until into winter time and my bed's now actually full of a disease called pink root so I think that's my onion growing uh, time over with because once you get it they don't they don't grow to the full potential so you're just like wasting your time really what else have we got there are a few of the failed giant onion attempts about eight pound those and they'll just get eaten another disappointment we show stump carrots this year they were really rough so I've pulled them all out and shoved them all back in again. <laughs> so, uh, but they'll all be eaten. You know, they're all absolutely gorgeous to eat. So it's not all. A, it's not a big loss. Right, what have we got? Courgette plant. Starting to just about give up the ghost now. I've cut a few leaves off because they've got mildew. And I found this great big thing lurking at the bottom, which can happen, can't it? If you leave a courgette that you can't see and it turns into a marrow. The old uh, winter squash things flying still. Got quite a few right now. I'll get down. They go a really psychedelic colour when they're ripe. Like that. There's a few more lurking at the bottom. One more hanging up there. And there's plenty still to come. Whether they'll get big enough in this sort of time of year. Like these. You never know, but uh, still plenty of them. Starting to get a bit of a second flush of beans as well. They seem to have sparked back into life again. My, my cobra beans, my dead ones, so uh, it's a bit of a strange one. What else have we got? These are the Anya spuds. I had some spare ones, so I just planted them a couple of months ago in pots and they're doing fine. So I should have some really late new potatoes soon. And then these are the banana shallots and garlic drying off nicely they're absolutely brilliant today, look. they're absolutely huge and they store well the necks are starting to shrivel up well but they're a cracking size look from seed I'd urge anyone to give them a go they're called banana shallots but this is the variety I grew called the Zebrun I think they're all the same because I've grown them both and they all come out exactly the same but that's the sort of size you can expect on a decent, a decent year so uh, good stuff garlic drying out still and that's about it I think really I'll just show you these mutant carrots that I said it was growing this is what they ended up like certainly mutant look at that it's an ugly thing so I might try it again because I've got one to about four pound and if I do it a bit differently try and get them a bit bigger next year who knows we might get a monster See if we can get the world record off Peter Glazebrook for £20 this year. So that's about it folks I think. Bit of a final roundup. See you later.